Thank you for joining us on this, uh, well, 2021 version of the Purcell Marion Grand Event. You know, last year, almost exactly 365 days ago, we were the first school in Cincinnati that had a significant event scheduled to where we quickly had to make it go virtual. And thanks to the support and hard work of many people, we were able to do that last year. So here we are again. I'm seated at this table by myself, symbolic of the, the hope for next year and being together in person at our second and hopefully final virtual Purcell Marion Grand event. You know, I'm really excited to be here with you. This is one of my most favorite events of the year where Cavaliers of all ages come together to support, well, the great things that are happening at Purcell Marion. It's also an opportunity for, well, myself and the team to share with you those great things that are happening at Purcell Marion. So as you sit back and enjoy this evening, and I hope you really enjoy it, pay attention to what you see in the videos and the surrounding uh, images as well. It's a nice glimpse into the old castle here and what our students are currently doing, what our teachers and staff are doing as well. We're very proud of what we've been able to do, and we're very proud of the bright future that we have in front of us. Stay tuned to the very end of this video, because beyond all the great raffle items that we have, we have another major announcement. Yes, I like saving major announcements for the grand event, and this might be the most significant of them all. You know, there's been some rumors around the community, and maybe you know what I'm hinting towards right now, but you'll get to see the images for the very first time of what we've been working so very hard on relative to the next expansion of Purcell Marion. So stay tuned to the end. I'll be back here, and you'll be the first, live and in person, to see what's happening. With that said, as we officially begin the Purcell Marion grand event right now, brought to you by Integrity Express Logistics, and Encore Technologies, thank you to our presenting sponsors. We'll begin this event the way we begin every day at Purcell Marion, and that's in prayer. So please join me for a moment. Let us remember that we are in God's holy presence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You know, Purcell Marion is a place where, where hope and hard work really come together and create something special. So let us have a prayer of hope today. Lord, Help each and every one of us to hear you saying, I am your hope over all the other voices that we hear in our communities and our world today. Help us to run to you with outstretched arms so that we may be filled with your hope to continue to do your will and your mission here at Purcell Marion in our lives and in our communities. In your name we pray, amen. Now, hope and hard work. We hope this is going to be a successful event. There's been an awful lot of hard work that's gone into making this a successful event for us. With that said, I'd like to introduce our two uh, Purcell Marion Grand Event Committee Chairs that really, uh, for over six months, have been working very hard. And they've got some great things to share with you. And that is uh, my lovely wife, Miss Lindsay Farsing, and Dr. Mary Ann Buccino. Thanks for being with us and enjoy the rest of the show. I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm Lindsay Farsing. And I'm Mary Ann Buccino. And we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We are so happy to bring this event to you virtually. In addition to our presenting sponsors, we want to thank our platinum sponsors, Ball & Gainer, Cavalier Distributing, Contemporary Cabinetry, Bill and Gina Goings, The Reynolds, our gold sponsors, Bachmeyer Press, Big Chief, Forward Edge, Halpin Plumbing, Johnner's Building Maintenance, John and Nancy Kaiser, Messer Construction, and our silver sponsors, Bank and Home and Garden, Fifth Third Bank, Don Heidhouse, Denny and Roberta Johnson, KMK Law, The Maxwell Family, Pinnacle Solutions, and Western Southern Financial Group. Our bronze sponsors, Bachmans, Comey and Shepard, Nick Shookman, Class of 1997, Deeper Roots Coffee, Donovan's Auto and Tire Center, Inquirer Printing, Grasshopper Landscaping, GPS Consulting, Municipal and Contractor Supply Products, 
The Sisters of Charity, Betsy and Paul Sittenfeld, Vertical Systems Elevator. We also want to thank the alumni from our family of schools, St. Mary's High School, Regina, Marion, Purcell, and Purcell Marion. So many alumni donated items this year. We could not have done this without you. One item I'd like to highlight is item number 125, which is the stone brewing and the sweets and meats barbecue. And I do speak from personal experience. We did have this uh, a couple years ago. It's amazing. The stone brewing vice president comes to your home with the beer. He talks about all of the labels and why they made the beer that way. And this year it's coupled with sweets and meats. They're award winning and it's amazing. It's a $250 gift card um, and they get to come and, and you get to have a party at your house. You just need to add your guests. I'd like to call your attention to two items as well. Um, item 117, lunch with Lenny Ham. Mr. Ham has been teaching here at the castle for 52 years. Anyone who has had a class with him, been on a trip to Germany or to uh, Italy, been in Latin club and ended up in a toga, they can tell you he's a great guy. I just think lunch with Lenny at Mecklenburg's Gardens has to be a great time. The next item I'd like to talk about is item number 201. It's with Mr. V, or as we call him Mr. V, Joey Versosa, and it's an arts and drinks party. Last time I was just a small part of this. I did the food for the event. It was so much fun and a whole group of people came. It was like a little mini reunion at, at in, the, in the castle and you get to make your own art. It was amazing. You definitely need to bid on this. Super fun, have some laughs and camaraderie. Bid, bid, bid. Another item I think is just really great is Poetry with Dick Haig. That's number 202. Mr. Haig began teaching at Purcell in 1969. I know many of you had him for senior English. He's published over 20 books of poetry. And he, we have for you two autographed books of poetry along with a personal reading with him for 20 guests at Roebling Point Books and Coffee. The coffee house has a wide variety of coffees and specialty lattes, espresso, along with dessert. Put that together with two hours of poetry and discussion and you're in for a good time. So now that we've bid and it's time to pick up, they'll all be ready for pickup tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. So Sunday at 1 p.m., you need to pull up to the south entrance, which is the entrance for the gym, actually. And we're going to have volunteers ready and waiting. You can stay in your car, and they're going to run stuff out to you. We'll see you tomorrow. And now back to Andy. Okay, thank you, Lindsay and Marianne, for all the hard work that you've put in here. You know, we have raffle items here for you to choose from. Good thing is we've limited the number of tickets that we're selling for each of the raffle items, which means your odds of winning are going up. Like they say, somebody's got to win and it might as well be you. And think about winning that barrel of bourbon. Now, you're not getting an actual barrel, but you are going down to Lexington. You're going to sample the various barrels. You're going to choose your barrel and they're going to bottle it for you. Think about that. Over a hundred bottles of bourbon coming to you from this barrel. You've got gifts for a long time for a lot of bourbon lovers in your life. So remember, bid high, bid often, keep your eye on the, on the auction items, buy those raffle chances, and enjoy the rest of the show. And at this time, I'd like to introduce to you our Director of Development, Purcell Marion grad, Miss. Candace Peelman. Thank you, Andy. The grand event is a celebration of the people and programs that make Purcell Marion unique and allow us to carry out our mission of cultivating the best for the benefit of all. Our school community is built on a strong foundation of St. Mary, Regina, Purcell, and Marion High Schools, and we're committed to the values that blend students across boundaries of socioeconomics, gender, ability, race, and religion. I'm one of those proud Purcell Marion graduates whose four years here on Hackberry Street profoundly shaped my life. Tonight, keep bidding and enjoy while we take you around the castle and show you what your generous support of this event truly helps accomplish.
Dr. Selmarian is an IB for all school. You know, IB for all means that you don't have to take the full complement of classes. If you're a math science kid and that's where your passion is, and maybe not so much in the visual arts, you can participate in IB for all, meaning that you take the IB math and science classes. And at the end of senior year, with the successful completion of the external evaluation, the external assessment, you earn the IB certificate for those classes, recognized by colleges and universities. IB for All allows you to focus on the classes you're interested in, where you have the passion to really dig deep and do the research. Having information and training on how to teach an IB course has certainly changed the way I view all of my classes. In the past, we would read and study essays in each unit and discuss them individually. Now I have students read those texts, go back to those texts and do some comparative assignments and activities. So that way they're choosing the text they want to discuss and they're able to talk about them from uh, a perspective that matters more to them. IB for All at Purcell Marion means that the IB approach to teaching and learning impacts every class, freshman year through senior year. The IB approach to teaching emphasizes collaboration, research, asking questions, developing theories, testing boundaries, looking for ways to understand curriculum that doesn't happen in a traditional classroom. IB goes much further. It impacts all the classes in terms of expecting students to do the research, to collaborate, to ask the hard questions, to discover what they're really interested in. Freshman through senior year. It's a comprehensive way of looking at education that really calls forth the best that the students have in a global context. That's IB for All at Purcell Marion. Purcell Marion's renewal has been spearheaded by bold new academic programs, from being authorized as an international baccalaureate world school and offering our rigorous IB diploma program to introducing the 3E guarantee backed by our career initiatives program. There's a path for every single student at Purcell Marion. Let's go check out some of those innovative programs. And I just thought, you know, this would be a big opportunity to expand my horizons and push myself as a student. I'm taking classes that I've never taken before, like visual art. I've never really been interested in it, but it's allowing me to explore a side of myself that I've never really looked into. I would like to pursue um, my academic endeavors further through college and then maybe as a master's. And I thought this program, since it's so rigorous and so um, expectant of you, that it would be a great opportunity to prepare for college. I knew it was going to be a challenge, but I like a good challenge, so, and I knew it would like challenge my communication skills and my social skills. So. I chose to pursue the IB diploma. In all honesty, I heard that it gave um, college credits. I'm also very excited to explore um, topics that I haven't been able to explore so deeply um, in my other, you know, one-year courses. I'm very confident in myself and I'm very confident in my peers. I'm excited to see how my classmates grow from it. I look forward to just learning a lot of new things, like even my history class, we, it's the first day, but she has us looking at things in a whole new light, and I'm excited to see what other ways I can look at things and experience, you know, different things that I've learned about but never really dove into. In the Center for College and Careers, we have a four-year curriculum created and laid out for the kids. Freshman year, we really try to help them get to know themselves and do some introspection through personality assessments. Um, we use a software called Naviance that is very helpful in 
provides the qui you know quizzes or assessments or questionnaires for the students and it stores their results so they can go back and revisit it and a lot of times um, retake the quiz or the assessment as they mature and as their answers may change. And then with sophomore year, it's really starting to connect those strengths and those interests to possible career areas. What sort of jobs, what sort of careers or vocations match to those, those strengths and those interests. Junior year, sort of drilling down on those possible careers, you know, choosing a 3E designation. So deciding, am I gonna be enrolled? Am I gonna be employed? Or am I gonna be enlisted? Then senior year, it's all about putting those plans into action. So I spent a lot of time with the seniors, uh, filling out applications, working with recruiters, uh, both college and military and uh, employment recruiters, and just making sure that students have all of their applications and apply for financial aid for those that are college bound, and um, then second semester really focusing on those private scholarships so that they can get as much of their education funded as possible if they're going that the college route. One of the things that really sets Purcell Marion apart from other Catholic schools is the fact that we are not pushing every single student to go to college because what we want is for the plan to fit the student. So we have students going straight into amazing career fields, manufacturing, construction, things like that, where they're gonna have a great living and they're gonna be super happy. So one of the best things about this job is that I get to ha establish such good relationships, especially with the seniors because I work so closely with them. Um, but of course, that's also like a double-edged sword because I get to know them, we have such a good relationship, and then they leave. And each class is better than the next. Each class, I think I'll never be so sad ever again, and then I'm super sad the next year. Uh, but I think that that shows that we have so, that each class is so good and works so hard to have a bright future. And we should just be so proud as a community of these students and the hard work they're doing to make sure that they have a great life ahead of them. I'm attending North Carolina Central University. I'm majoring in sports management. I want to become an athletic director. I want to help younger kids become professional athletes. When I went to the college workshops, um, Miss LaForge just basically helped us learn the courses that we need to take for to go to the college and things that we need required for our major. Miss LaForge helped me with the fee waivers. We got we had meetings every day, contacting the school, making sure that they had my, you know, have my transcripts, all that, all the things that I needed to attend and apply. Brazil is just one big family. I've been here since my freshman year. I've learned so much about, like, you know, everybody. I'm close with the teachers, Ms. Johnson, everybody like that. Just I really miss the people. class is part of the career initiatives program that uh, Principal Farsing wanted me to help initiate starting about two and a half years ago. In the first year, uh, the construction and engineering class started out with 17 students. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we had 42 students enrolled in the class. I didn't actually take it out of my own will, they just signed me up for it, so I took it. But I slowly actually grew to like it. It's really sparking students' interests and taking them down pathways that they otherwise wouldn't have thought about or wouldn't have had the opportunity to take. I'm going to college at UD and I'm studying biology. But since I do have like a want to like learn how to build things, it was like a good experience for me to be in this class. It actually gave me some new experiences, taught me some more homeowning skills. Uh, allowed me to know more about using certain tools, the difference with certain tools. I learned how to use a drill a lot better than I did before. Oh, and the compound monitor saw. Yep. It was scary at first because I'm a very clumsy person, so I thought like I'd take a finger off or something like that, but nothing happened. Mr. Wilkins was always there to watch us. I hope to go to college so I can become a software developer. With this class, it's shown me different um, viewpoints in engineering, and it's got me to think about how uh, Software engineering can play a bigger role in this stuff and see what else the field or your career goal can also help you to do.
We have two students who have gone through the construction engineering class uh, go on to uh, take classes, uh, a class in construction management over with our partners at Northern Kentucky University who has a fantastic construction management program and so our students are getting college experience based on the principles that they learned in here. Uh, we've also got a student who took this class who is currently pursuing a summer internship with a local construction company. The bench building project was in response to COVID. One of our partners, Allied Construction Industries, ACI, uh, came up with this really fantastic interactive plan where they'd allow the students to, or they would give the students opportunities to build benches or a variety of other projects. Our students chose the benches. Um, Maddie was our main builder. Manuel was our foreman. He was in a, a virtual format, but he was kind of the one who kind of kept us on target. Uh, we also had Mark on the team. Mark was also a builder. He did a fine job doing some good building as well. Justin was our logician. So I decided to be the logician since I was going to be at home and I was virtual and I wanted to play a bigger role in it so I just do the, log, the logs for the group. What Justin did was he would watch the students every day through a, uh, a, com a computer camera video uh, live stream and he did an amazing job keeping exquisitely detailed records. You know, I always had to be more specific so I always had to make sure I got all the details. I asked everybody what their part was, like what they did for the day when we worked on the bench. Making sure I had all the measurements, um, everything that we talked about design-wise and also um, anything else we were going to add in the future. Uh, but ACI is an awesome partner and they gave our students this great opportunity to learn a heck of a lot more about their hands than they would have otherwise. It was really cool to know that like, even though we're the only school like not for like construction engineering and all that, that our work like got put into it in like the first year that we did this. Your support of Purcell Marion allows us to offer extracurricular opportunities to our students, creating positive memories that will last a lifetime. Here are some of those opportunities. Hi folks, I'm Anthony White here with the Creative Writing Club at Purcell Marion High School and I hope you enjoy these two pieces. A question, a sonnet written by senior Catherine Stubbe, and the screenplay, Wings of an Awakening, by junior Isaac Wilson. If love is dead, why do we marvel so? At fields of green and sunshine pure and true, at streaks of different stone in cliffs and hills, at nature from Salt Lake to Timbuktu. If love is dead, then why do our souls soar when a friend does lend a helping hand? Or perhaps it happens at a smile of a peer we hadn't seen in a while. If love is dead, then why are we so drawn to couples holding hands for 60 years? Why do we take joy in another's fortune? Why do we grow sad at another's tears? If love is dead, then none of these would be so love does live, as you can plainly see. So this is what I get for following my instincts. An audience is undivided attention. The demons charge at him. He charges back and proceeds to punch and kick all the demons' heads that crawl his way. Like a cowboy, Michael toys with them. Aw, oh, is that all you got? Come on, you can do better than that. He taunts as he then runs towards the last few demons left, as one of them hurls an aisle at him. Hey, one of your buddies said something about taking me to your master. What's he talking about? And get to the point, I don't have all day. As many schools continue to cut art programming, Purcell Marion is growing our offerings. Let's go take a look at the Drumline and the Art Club.
My name is Joey Bersosa. And my name is Cecilia Padilla, and we make up the visual art department here at the castle. The visual arts track has never felt more complete now that we've implemented our rigorous IB visual arts program. Students on the visual arts track have shown a lot of growth and continue to receive critical recognition over the past three years. A number of recent graduates continue their art education in college, and some have received local and national recognition in juried art shows and art reviews. Let's walk you through our department and the classes your students can take part in. Marginalized Gestures Throughout Visual Culture serves as the intro to visual arts class here at Purcell. MGTVC students engage in the origins of visual culture as communication, using ideas, techniques, and strategies to create artwork from projects that allow them the space to include their own creative insights. Experiments with materials and techniques acts as the next step in the visual arts track that challenges students to recall the foundational work set by MGTVC and apply that towards honing techniques, experimenting with a range of traditional and non-traditional materials, and observing the meaning that is created when combining the two into a piece of artwork. The capstone of the visual arts track is the IB visual arts program titled Representation and Non-Representation in Art and Culture. In this rigorous two-year program that happens uh, between junior and senior year, students will be given the conceptual and physical space to begin the journey of creating a thought-provoking portfolio of work. Peer-to-peer -peer learning, visiting artists, art and culture theory, and critical writing are explored through rigorous projects and independent work. And if the IB visual arts class is not of interest to your students, semester-long classes that focus on contemporary art, new materials, and engaging concepts are offered as well. These classes range from concepts and video art, images in the digital age, and installation art in critical spaces, to name a few. I bet it at one dollar now too. Auction is still happening. Now, we don't have an auctioneer. That was just my weak attempt at trying to be an auctioneer for about a second. But keep bidding on those items. Bid high, bid often. Don't forget, we've got those raffle tickets here. And at the end of this video, we've got a grand reveal. So stay tuned for that exciting reveal. Thank you. I love big cities because, you know, there's something to do every day. You know, I grew up in like a small town. It's just pretty quiet, pretty run of the mill. And, you know, I went to a small Catholic school. I was in a small grade of like uh, 12 people. So, you know, every little difference is kind of noticed. It felt really isolating. I was always the one who was like, I want to be an astronaut, I want to be a director. I just had, you know, ginormous aspirations for myself, you know, to be different from everybody else and to kind of follow my own path. And so, you know, those aspirations really kind of got me looking at outside of Claremont County. I wanted to be around a diverse group of people, somewhere where diversity isn't you know, pushed to the corner or tokenized. I wanted diversity just fully embraced. I remember my mom was like, we're gonna take my brother to see this like open house for herself. And I remember being kind of like, like just loving the architecture of the building a lot. And that was the first thing that really drew me in besides like all the hospitality. As soon as I was done with the tour, I was like, I really have to go to this school. Like I have to, there's like just a strong urge and feeling in me that I had to go. You know, my parents told me after open house, they were like, yeah, did you know that your grandpa and your grand uncle went there? Um, and I never got to meet my grandfather, but it kind of feels like he's in the school with me and like going through this like high school journey with me. I'll turn it over to Josie. Hey, good morning, Cavs. Um, all right. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Loving God, you call us to be servants to all. It was a little bit rocky at, the, at first, because I was really shy. 
now it's like I love how with the size of this like the class it's like you get to kind of know everybody and I love that atmosphere the other students were just like so instrumental in me like kind of really coming out of my shell because they're just so supportive I've been an honor student since I was a freshman I always said in like middle school and elementary school up until freshman year I was always like I cannot do math it's just not my thing what really helped me out through math was my math teachers. It's really an open environment to really ask teachers questions. My understanding of high school teachers were that all of them were just out to get you and that they were just terrible for my siblings. And I just never got that, like I never had that experience here. And you know, now I'm an IB diploma student. I think it's like kind of an adventure. I'm really proud of myself for really taking up the challenge. I've had such a transformation from middle school. That middle school girl who was insecure about like stuff because other people pointed it out. I'm like, those differences, like, you know, I can really relate to people. Everybody has different aspirations. Everybody has different dreams. And it's like, all of them are, are supported or all of them are really like embraced. Anybody, regardless of background, can really find themselves here. And that's what really makes me like proud to be a Cavalier. One of the pillars of Marianist education is inclusion. And I think that's like just in, like integral to being a Cavalier, is to be really um, caring and compassionate to people regardless of differences. And I've really been showed that like inclusion here at Purcell. You know, when I go to college, I really just want to take that mindset to wherever I go. Wow. Thank you, Josie, for sharing your story with so many of us tonight. And, and I continue to be impressed with the power of the Cavalier spirit and the stories that our students are creating right here in these walls at the castle. Tonight, we encourage you to bid high and bid often. There are wonderful raffle and auction packages. You could be the winner. And then also you'll notice on BidPal, there's a donate button. If you like what you've heard tonight, if you're inspired, if you're an alumni, a family, a supporter, click that button and give generously. Our programs, our athletics, our students, none of these things would be possible without your support. And now, the moment so many of us, including myself, have been waiting for, introducing the next chapter in Cavalier Athletics. Hello, my name is DJ Dowdy, Athletic Director and Head Football Coach. I want to thank you for turning, tuning in tonight to our grand event. We are excited to embark on this new journey, uh, this new chapter and generation in Cavalier Athletics here. I want to thank everyone who helped support our, our endeavor, as well as those who support us going forward. We're excited to bring sports to our campus for the first time in 90 plus years. So thank you all, have a good night. We are going to be the first to play football at the castle. I'll be the first here to play soccer at the castle. I'm going to be the first to play soccer at the castle. I'm gonna be the first to play softball at the castle. Okay, thank you so very much. A uh, couple reminders here as we conclude our time together. Uh, bidding is open until 11 p.m. tonight. All right, so uh, stay active. Remember, bid off and bid high. 
you know you want that vacation, go get it, you can do it, right? And then tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. on Facebook Live, we will pull our raffle winners. So anybody that's in for a raffle uh, tomorrow, Sunday morning, we will go Facebook Live, we will choose that winner, we will make that announcement. If you can tune into Facebook Live, feel free to. If you catch it later in the day, that's fine. But whoever wins, you do not need to be tuned in live. We will follow up with you. We just want to try it live because that sounds like fun. Okay? So, with that said, from one Cavalier to another, as always, together, onward Cavaliers, thank you and good night.